Coming to you live from the White Picket Studios in Houston, Texas. This is the Realty Ruckus. If you are in any way, shape, or form involved in the real estate industry, this is the show for you. And now, your host, Alan Hernandez. Welcome to the Realty Ruckus out of the White Picket Realty Studios. I am your host, Alan Hernandez. Sitting next to me, your producers, David Bonilla and Jabron Hernandez. We are here to make sure that your real estate business is growing at all times. But before we get started with today's phenomenal welcome back episode. Oh man, and it feels good to be back on the air too. It does. You know, we've been, we've been out for approximately what, two weeks now? Yeah. We've been out for two weeks, yeah. Of course, most of that was due to Harvey and then Harvey mm-hmm. knocked out our internet and and actually Harvey knocked out Harvey knocked out our office. Yeah, Harvey yeah. knocked I was like just our internet <laughs> knocked out the whole damn office. <laughs> Harvey knocked out our office, but but you know what what Harvey really did, I don't think anyone could have been prepared for here in Houston. Oh, oh wait, what? <laughs> we did now, a whole episode. Now, still on rewind. Now, I, I, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's not. Let's well, go back in time for a second. Back yeah, in time to what? <laughs> what? Let's not forget Why the did episode we... <laughs> before the storm when we had this conversation. We did have this conversation before the storm, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I may have said something here and there that may have not made quite as much sense. Are we still on? Oh, yeah. No, no, I, oh. I was just checking my own mic. Oh, appreciate uh, that. Thanks yeah, I got to make sure stuff. I sound sexy for the of audience. Of course. You know? Make sure that I sound sexy for the audience, uh, yeah, too. But I can't make both of us sound sexy. Thank then. you guys for watching, by the way. <laughs> Don't forget that you can drop all your questions, comments, concerns, and trolling down below. We love to hear from you. Give us your thumbs up, your hearts, or your angry faces. Any of those, we welcome. We want to know what you guys are thinking, going through, and how we can help you. So, speaking of, what is it that I said that was so bad that you guys are picking uh, on me You for? called me a doomsday prepper. I did. I did. And, and you said... You laughed and Come scoffed. On. <laughs> I'm just going to stay home and Netflix and chill. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. We're okay. prepared. I'm not okay. going to do anything. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Last time we had one of these scares... It was from a storm named Bill who never showed up, and and everybody had gone out and bought you know all the waters in the world and all mm-hmm. this you know all yeah, this craziness. Yeah. So you're still trying to defend yourself, is what you're saying. I'm, what I'm saying is I don't think any of us could have been prepared for what really happened and what really except happened, for the ones that went out and prepared. Except for the ones that were prepared for what really happened. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, here's the thing. What really happened was was devastating. <laughs> like like nobody could have seen is, all of that coming. It nobody. was absolutely devastating. Nobody could have seen what actually happened to our city, to our town coming. And so today we're going to be discussing what we experience one, but two, what we think is going to happen to the market because where it's, it's going. Big. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. We're talking about Houston, which is one of the biggest real estate markets in the country. Mm-hmm. We're an area that pays the highest property taxes in the entire country. Yet we have a huge problem. Yep. Uh, and I, I am tired of people calling it a, a short-term effects. Yeah. Uh, but first of all, we want to just give everyone a brief little warning. Yes. Anyone who's still out there, there's a lot of service crews and repair companies that are out by houses and they're actually doing work to fix power lines, fix internet, fix all those things. Yes. Be careful because there's actually some scammers out there that are thieves. Yeah. They'll come, they'll knock on your door. Hey, I'm with Comcast. I just need to get inside to fix your internet. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, you're being robbed at gunpoint by somebody. Well, here's the thing. It all started, and, and I get it. We are going through a to the, just something that is unprecedented. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we're yeah. going through it. We're going through a crisis here in our city. And and one thing I want to acknowledge our city for is how amazing we have really stepped it up. Stepped it up. Yeah. Everyone has come together yeah. to help, to contribute, to donate, to raise funds. I oh, mean, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah, JJ what wants we're up to doing. 17 million yeah. now that he's raised. Well, oh, I, I love it. And also in particular a huge shout out to our real estate community because I mean obviously on our social media we have a lot of involvement with the real yeah, estate community yeah and the outpouring I saw uh, the community I mean I still I'm still seeing like for instance um, you know one of our good friends Danny Garcia up, yeah. in, up in Kingwood yeah. I mean, he's delivering thousands of meals a day, coordinating those efforts. Yep. So a big shout our out own, to all of you guys out there. Our own agents out yeah. there still going house yeah, to house, absolutely. demoing houses. Yeah, our agent Eric, he was rescuing people on, on a boat uh, during the floods. I mean, it was it was amazing. And uh, the real estate community is going to be a large part of those recovery efforts. Now, what's incredible to me is that here in Houston, they're saying that over half of the people that were rescued were rescued non by, by non-rescue personnel. Right. We're talking about everyday civilians that were getting out there on boats, getting the elderly, getting the children, getting the people that they couldn't get through the high water. And guys, that water was dangerous in some parts. I mean, we 
we unfortunately had to go on our own trek during the hurricane to yeah. go get supplies because we didn't doomsday prep and we didn't have enough supplies. Yeah. And, and yeah, the currents were really heavy. It I mean, there was to, to guardrails because the currents were coming in so quickly. Yeah. Oh, crazy. So really. it, it's, it's really important. It's really awesome that they did that for us. And here's the thing for you, just to get back to the looting portion that you, that oh, yeah, you, yeah, that yeah, you yeah. mentioned, Absolutely. this is the one thing that I love about Texas. Everyone decided if you if you loot, we shooting. But I got to tell you, I think most of the people that I know have, have have also prepared for that, and I think most of that was also kept down to a minimum. Look, yeah. Katrina had some of the worst looting ever yeah. after a natural disaster. It was it was terrible, and I got to say, I got to hand it the way that the city of Houston handled the entire disaster has been phenomenal. They yeah. they've kept looting to a minimum. They've done a really good job. They they had tons of police. They had the yeah. National Guard, the Coast Guard, yeah. all. The, the, the Cajun Navy, they, they had everybody out here. The response has been incredible. When we get back, we're going to talk about short-term effects, yep. long-term effects, which is really important if you're out there, real estate investor, realtor, anything to deal with real estate, really, you yeah. need to know what's going on. And we're going to get into that after the break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, everyone. This is David over at White Picket Realty. And I wanted to tell you about my friends over at Plans Express who can save you the headache of running your own permits. These guys are committed to offering a one-stop solution for all your plan and permit needs. They're proudly serving their friends and neighbors in the Houston surrounding areas, and they offer great service at an exceptional value with dedicated professionals ready to serve. Contact them today at 832-675-6217. Hey Houston, this is Alan Hernandez, and I want to remind you guys to visit our friends over at Quest IRA to learn everything there is to learn about investing with your IRA. Now, if you haven't been over there recently, you have to check them out. They have free educational classes, networking opportunities, the ability to tap into a billion dollars for your real estate investing deals. These are the guys to know when it comes to learning about this kind of stuff. You want to make sure you visit them and check them out over at www.questira.com. Again, that's questira.com. Stop searching and start staying in the know with our Houston Real Estate Events page on Facebook. Follow us by searching at Houston Real Estate Events to stay up to date on the latest events for real estate in the Houston area. If you are interested in having your event on our page, please email me at david at whitepicketrealty.com. Again, that's david at whitepicketrealty.com non-paid events only. One more time, find us on Facebook at Houston Real Estate Events and we'll see y'all at the next one. What do you love about White Picket? I love that we work together as a team. I love being professional while having fun. I love the innovative approach we take every day. I love the support we get to grow our business. We, we love White Picket. And I love empowering the next generation of realtors to live life by their own design. If you're looking to grow, come grow with us. Email join at teamwpr.com. Again, that's J-O-I-N at teamwpr.com. And we are back on Realty Ruckus. Remember that you can find us live on Facebook and YouTube where if you chat with us during the show, we can answer your questions live on the air. Now, David, last time you gave a weather report, you brought in Harvey. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I need that you to give me fault. some good news this time. Please. What can we expect? Well, we, uh, we are expecting some sunshine, actually over the next few days. So the next two days are going to be a little bit cloudy, but then Thursday through the rest of the weekend, it's going to be nice and sunny. And the good part is that our temperatures are actually starting to drop now. We're going to be in the high 80s for our highs and high 60s for our lows throughout nice. the remainder of okay, the week. Yeah. So we are looking forward to some great weather. Hopefully that helps up with the recovery efforts yes. and speeding up with this water drying out and draining. We need this water to drain. There are still many parts of town that are undrivable. You cannot even drive through them yeah, because West the water Houston is so high. Is, which is is just so which bad. caused massive traffic jams all today. I yep. know traffic's been a huge headache for people out there. Um, everyone's trying to get back to their normal commute, yep. uh, school hours, all that good stuff, and it's caused well, a lot Beltway Aiden Memorial is still underwater. Yeah. I mean, Beltway Aiden Memorial is being used as a bayou right now, yeah. not as a freeway. It's completely closed down. That whole west side of Houston, Briar Forest, Memorial, there's just huge chunks of it that are completely undrivable, yep. unless you've got like an 18-wheeler to get through there and it's just horrible and i think that's some of the short-term effects that the yeah. city's going to look at we wanted to get into short term what yeah. can we expect and then we're going to talk about long term what we can expect well look we're having a meeting on this here inside of our office yeah on thursday because all of our agents said 
well, what is going to happen? Where where is all this going to lead to? Yeah. Is is what the, does this mean for real estate? Yeah, what does this mean for real estate? Yeah. Is the market going to crash? Are we ever going to buy and sell houses anymore? You yeah. know, where is all of this going to go? And I think I think these are questions that everyone out there is asking. Oh yeah. And 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 before you get out there and start being that 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 you know vulture asking people to sell their house immediately because it flooded, let's oh, talk man. about what are the what are the short-term effects and then let's get into maybe what can we do to provide value to these people well you got to remember number one everyone's gonna go out there and this is for everybody you need to file an insurance claim it doesn't matter whether you had flood insurance or not you need to go ahead mm -hmm. uh, now the problem is that if you don't qualify for FEMA aid that you your SOL really uh, you, you're gonna be offered a loan you're going to be told that there's a that there's a low interest loan. It's like three and a half percent. Yes. But the problem is you still got to qualify for it. And the house payment, you have to make sure you can pay your house payment and the additional loan. Yes. So there's going to be a lot of homeowners out there who they can't handle both of the payments. I mean, mm -hmm. a $40,000 loan you know, to fix their house. And that's, I'm talking, that's cheap. Yes. Because let's be honest, mold remediation is expensive. It's very it expensive, is. especially right now when there's not enough mold remediation companies in Houston to handle all of the demand. Yeah, no, absolutely. And not only that, but we're talking about there's still houses that are underwater. Yes. They've been underwater now for two weeks. Yes. Wall studs are not designed to be underwater for two weeks. No. The structural integrity of those houses is coming into a point where it's becoming dangerous. That's right. And a lot yeah. of those houses- You're not going to be able to just replace sheetrock on those. Yeah, exactly. So I think, hold on. If you're an investor, hold your horses. Yeah. Let people try to handle their stuff and they will start to come out and say, hey, I need to just sell. Yeah. And that's a time when you can come out as an investor and you can start letting your business work. And I'm but saying don't this, be a vulture. I'm saying this, and I think we're bringing this up because we've seen a lot of posts so from people, have made, oh, yeah, man. from people, people online. people that are angry. Yeah. Really people angry. that are feeling very angry and very and, and, and feel uh, offended. Let because, me see if I can find one. Because there yeah. are either agents yeah. who who don't know any better. And, oh, I mean, everything flooded Saturday. Yeah. Sunday afternoon, I see an agent posting on her Facebook, hey, everyone who got flooded my yes. dad wants to buy five flood houses yes i saw like, that easy there easy i the, can't tell you what agent's name that was everything. but it was an agent in in that i she was a, a friend of mine on on facebook and yeah. she had to erase her facebook page yeah she was an yeah. agent with keller williams and she had to erase her facebook page yeah. because things got so bad for her yeah and and here and here's actually another one um it looks like we might be having some connectivity issue guys it's was handling the IT for the weekend, so you can only imagine <laughs> yeah. that her internet's the best spot. That's about the worst <laughs> idea we could have had. I, I, Alan had the IT for the weekend, so we have connectivity issues. We know why. Yeah. But anyways, uh, this was a post that Manuel shared from us from an agent. And uh, or I guess actually a broker in this broker said, uh, her name's Katie, she says, I've given all my agents permission to break knees if they catch one more investor walking into homes, some being our listings, uh, while the owner's People right now, I, and I hate to say this because I, I don't like telling people to be skeptical. Yeah, you can't do it at the expense of of, of time. You yeah. can't you can't you can't say well whatever. I'm just gonna pay this guy, the first guy to come by. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I've been getting asked a lot is, well, what's gonna happen to flood insurance? Is flood insurance getting ready to just skyrocket? Are are, are we gonna even be able to get flood insurance here in the next in the next? Uh, few months and, so, and that's a really good question that's something that we can talk about as soon as we come back from the break but i do think that the especially with irma out in the in the pacific and jose right behind irma. and jose right behind irma there could be a big problem with fema coming up and mm -hmm. fema is the one who backs a lot of those flood insurance policies yes yep so we'll have to talk about that when we get back from the mm -hmm. break we apologize for the connectivity issues we're going to try to fix it during the commercial break we'll be right back you're on the realty ruckus Hey everyone, this is David over at White Picket Realty, and I wanted to tell you about my friends over at Plans Express who can save you the headache of running your own permits. These guys are committed to offering a one-stop solution for all your plan and permit needs. They're proudly serving their friends and neighbors in the Houston surrounding areas, and they offer great service and an exceptional value with dedicated professionals ready to serve. Contact them today at 832-675-6217. Hey Houston, this is Alan Hernandez and I want to remind you guys to visit our friends over at Quest IRA to learn everything there is to learn about investing with your IRA. Now if you haven't been over there recently, you have to check them out. They have free educational classes, networking opportunities, the ability to tap into a billion dollars for your real estate investing deals. 
these are the guys to know when it comes to learning about this kind of stuff. You want to make sure you visit them and check them out over at www.questira.com. Again, that's questira.com. Stop searching and start staying in the know with our Houston Real Estate Events page on Facebook. Follow us by searching at Houston Real Estate Events to stay up to date on the latest events for real estate in the Houston area. If you are interested in having your event on our page, please email me at david at whitepicketrealty.com. Again, that's david at whitepicketrealty.com non-paid events only. One more time, find us on Facebook at Houston Real Estate Events, and we'll see y'all at the next one. What do you love about White Picket? I love that we work together as a team. I love being professional while having fun. I love the innovative approach we take every day. I love the support we get to grow our business. We We love White Picket! And I love empowering the next generation of realtors to live life by their own design. If you're looking to grow, come grow with us. Email join at teamwpr.com. Again, that's J-O-I-N at teamwpr.com. And we are back on Realty Ruckus. Remember that you can find us live on Facebook and YouTube where if you chat with us during the show, we can answer your questions live on the air. Now, we want to go ahead and jump into the long-term effects Mm -hmm. of the storm and what we can expect. So we've talked about a little bit short-term. you got bad traffic problems. You've got the city in just disarray. Mm -hmm. Half of the schools are shut down. HISD had 55 campuses get major damage. Yep. They're saying they may not reopen the rest of the year. A lot of government buildings are down. A lot of government buildings are down. The courthouses downtown are just a complete mess. Yep. Jury duty has been canceled for wow. everybody for yep. weeks. Uh, they just don't know what's going to happen right now. Mm-hmm. And, and things are really ugly on that side of it. Mm-hmm. Now, we know that. Let's get into some of the long-term things because mm-hmm. these are the predictions that everybody wants to hear. This is what everyone wants to know is what the heck can I expect here in the next couple of months and, and, and what do I do to protect myself to, to make sure I'm on the right side of the aisle when the when this is all said and done? Well, look, here's the way I see it, and it's going to break down to, to about two categories of people. It's the people that had flood insurance and coverage, yeah. right? And the people that didn't have any flood insurance or coverage. And I think the, I think the quotes right now are about 20% of the homes that did flood had flood insurance. And so the great majority of the homes that did flood did not. Meaning that the yeah, I mean, how many flood, how many homes do we have so far that flooded? Do we have a well, count? Well, there's a there's a calculation right now. So they put out this heat map, and actually, th- this is how technology is amazing, right? Because big companies, mm-hmm. no, Google hasn't donated any money to the storm, but what Google has done is put their entire analytics public for for the researchers yeah. to go and pull. I saw that. So what they did is that they showed a map, and it was a satellite image. And it was an infrared image of, of Google's map that showed how deep the water got in different areas of yeah. town. And then you could zoom in on the level of that map and you could see individual houses and it would tell you two feet, three feet, four feet. It'd tell you exactly how deep it was. Incredible. So they used that to make a, an estimate of how many houses had flooded and how many houses had flooded uh, severely, mm-hmm. which severely meant that they received, I think, over a foot of water. Mm-hmm. 60,000 severe. 60. 60,000 houses were considered severe. Mm-hmm. There was 20,000 20, additional houses they considered extensive flooding, which mm-hmm. was six inches or less of water. Mm-hmm. And then they had another 40,000 houses that they believe took in water, mm-hmm. but maybe it wasn't extensive. So maybe like a quarter inch to an inch of water. It was just damaged by the floods. Yeah. So you're talking That's about over 100. 120,000 houses right now is the preliminary estimate yeah. of how many houses took in water with 80,000 of those being severe damage. Now, this is what gets crazy. Yeah. That's only counting houses. Right. Do you know how many people are displaced right now? I think it's like, what, 325,000 or something like that? 660,000 people is the wow. estimate of how many people are displaced in yeah. Houston right now. Yeah. That's 10% of the population that's, right. that's displaced. And, and so where does that lead in terms of long-term effects? The people that are displaced right now are more than likely in some of the surrounding cities. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? They're, they're, well, you got to remember areas like Kingwood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No one expected Kingwood to flood. No. Kingwood had never flooded nope. before. It, it's been 100 years and Kingwood hasn't mm-hmm. flooded. And then all of a sudden, Kingwood is eight feet underwater yeah. in certain areas. Yeah. No one there had flood insurance. Why? Because they're not in a flood they're not plane. In a flood plane. Yeah. And this is what I get back to what I was saying earlier. Houston doesn't have a flooding problem. Houston has a drainage, drainage. problem because the water has doesn't have anywhere proper to go. Right. Areas that you thought that are in a 100-year floodplain that you said, 
for sure they're going to get six, seven feet of water, got nothing. Yeah. They didn't flood at all. Yeah, that was that's that's what really kind of threw me off. There was yeah. areas that we expected to flood. And they didn't get anything. And they didn't get anything. Yeah. And then the areas that were completely unexpected all of a sudden had, like you said, eight feet of water. And you're like, man, what is this? What is actually happening right now? And that's what actually kind of drove some of that, some of that just, just, weird creepy feeling of where is all this water really going to go and and, and, and when is it going to stop well and it was so cool because i saw this interview with the houston uh, i mean the uh, army corps of engineers and they were talking about houston mm -hmm. and they were, they were telling everyone how houston was designed and what the problem with houston is they said that the way houston was designed so first of all the flood maps and not the flood maps the flooding control yeah. was designed in 1906 it's 111 years old yeah it was also designed for a city with less than a million people Mm -hmm. We're at 6 million people. The population at that time, the amount of houses, you got to remember, there was all that rural land. Yeah. So one of the first things the Army Corps engineers said is, Houston hasn't properly accounted for how much runoff comes from all those houses that they build when they do all those new construction neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. All those roads you put in, that's all getting rid of drainage that used to be there. And it yeah. doesn't tie in properly to the major roads. So they pulled up the major roads, Richmond, Westheimer, there's a few other ones. Those were designed to flood. So those roads were originally made to where water would run out of the neighborhoods mm -hmm. onto those major roads, mm -hmm. run into the bayous, the bayous would then drain out into the ocean, mm -hmm. yeah. and that was the flood control. Mm -hmm. And they built the Barker and the Attics Reservoirs in order to hold all that water because they were like, well, if we get a really amount of, a huge amount of water, there's no way they'll ever overflow that. But they never expected Houston to get to six million people in the whole metropolitan yeah, area either. With all that additional concrete mm -hmm. so, construction. And what they're saying is that the Annex Reservoirs and the Barker Reservoirs are so old that they're they're only like 80% effective now. So 20% yeah. of the amount that they used is all sediment and trapped and it doesn't drain well. And that's the big problem that they're having right now is they're controlling the release, but they're having to do it really slowly. Because if they do it too quickly, they're afraid that they're going to reflood the entire rest of the city yeah. because we have such poor drainage. Now, mm -hmm. this is what's crazy to me. Every year, we get government funding that spends about two billion dollars to do repairs to those reservoirs. Mm -hmm. With twenty billion, we could fix all the flooding problems in Houston. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the estimate by the Army yeah, Corps of Engineers. Yeah, and I think that's obviously one of the long-term effects that we're going to have to talk about as well. In addition to the real estate, is how are we going to fix, fix this problem, the, the draining problem, because yeah. You know, people forget that Houston was nothing but a swamp when it was first founded. Yeah. You know, we're sitting very low towards the sea level. And when you take away all those plains, the, the, basically the, the grassy plains, which used to, they soak up water like crazy. Yeah, they did. You know, that's what's caused the drainage problem. I mean, there, uh, my wife's grandparents' house flooded. And it didn't start flooding majorly until they wiped out this whole forest, basically, by the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, the water from Cypress Creek just runs right down mm -hmm. into the bottom part of the neighborhood. And, I mean, it was so bad this time. They actually started flooding on the, not Sunday night when the heavy rain started, the or not Saturday night, but like Friday mm -hmm. when the first little trickle of rain came in. Yeah. Water was already coming up to their house in that wow. day. Wow. That's how bad it is over there from those that environment being stripped out of there and basically just allowing the water to run free freely yeah. down to those neighborhoods and, and mm -hmm. so let's talk about another long-term issue so mm -hmm. that that's one is we got to fix the drainage right. right like the drainage is the big problem here mm -hmm. houston it's not that houston has a floodplain problem and the fema maps that's all bs it's, it's, all it's, bullshit, it's bullshit yeah. Yeah. it's bullshit those maps mean nothing mm -mm. And, and the flooding this time now we show see you, that they mean nothing yeah, those maps mean nothing those maps are base flood elevations yeah. oh, oh no it means nothing. It means nothing if the drainage is not being fixed those maps mean zero yep but one of the big things to consider going forward is one regulations on building yeah now here's a problem with the new laws that donald trump put in he says to put a new regulation you got to remove two existing ones mm -hmm. so with this new fema grant that they just they just earmarked the money for there's no regulations coming mm -hmm. they need regulations bad on this is what you can and you can't build and if you're going to build something you got to make sure that that thing can drain yeah. actually one of the real estate investors he posted, he, he posted uh, Jeff Galonic. Mm -hmm. He posted a post, and I really like what he suggested. He said, all new houses in Houston going forward should all have to be on pier and beam. Yeah. Every single one should have to be on pier and beam. Why? 
because you keep that drainage underneath. Things yeah. can still soak into the ground yeah. underneath the house. You're not just pouring a giant piece of concrete. That's true. Yeah. I After mean, this flood, I, I started wondering why more houses weren't on pier and beam because mm -hmm. for an area like this, it just makes a whole lot more sense. Yeah. It, it's all it's all men mental. People think it's safer to be on a slab, which yeah. is not even true. Yeah. Pier and beam foundations have been found to be sometimes even more effective than a yeah. slab foundation, mm -hmm. especially in an area like Houston. It shifts a lot because you can go in, exactly. shim a pier and beam, and then you're done. But people want to slap. People think that that's better. So let me let me change the conversation a little bit because I know that one of the big questions is what's going to happen to our property values. Oh, are yeah. we first off? Mm -hmm. Are we getting ready to see a max exodus? Does, is everyone just going to decide to just sell and leave and go live somewhere else where it doesn't flood? And what happens to all the houses that did flooded? What happens to the houses that just flooded this one time because it was an unprecedented? flood what happens to the houses like for example in Maryland which where this is the third year in a row that they yeah. flooded well I think that what you're gonna and, and this is really sad because you're gonna see areas of town that are really nice highly respected parts of town yeah that are going to fall off the map I yep. think so and it's Maryland's gonna, gonna be one of them Maryland's, Maryland's gonna, gonna be, be one, one of them, of them. it's gonna Maryland is the next Inwood Forest and mm -hmm. if anyone knows anything about Inwood Forest that was a beautiful neighborhood with giant mansions on a golf course that was super well taken care of yeah. and then Flood after flood mm -hmm. after flood. And FEMA came in and said, no more. We can't keep giving you money. We're going to yeah. buy the houses out. Alan right. had a house bought I out did. in the area by FEMA, mm -hmm. and it didn't, it didn't flood. Yeah. It, but FEMA was like, we don't even want to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't know even it's take going any chances to flood. on it. Too, too high of a risk. And yeah. it probably yeah. flooded. It probably flooded during this flood, as far as we know. I don't know. Did it? it was knocked down, actually. Oh, it was knocked yeah. down. Yeah. Right. Last time I checked. They did it before they could even <laughs> yeah. flood. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason they said yeah. no more. Yeah. So that's the first thing we have to look at is, how many houses are actually going to be just condemned? Yeah. How many houses is FEMA going to say, we're going to tear them down? Because the more teardowns that start being in a neighborhood, and that land is now owned by FEMA. And this is what's crazy. I always asked Alan, because I went through Inwood Forest, what, 12? years ago with him when yeah. I bought that house and I said why are there so many empty lots here yeah and they and just you, stay empty they just stay empty they just yeah. stay empty they well, know they, they're nobody, owned by FEMA they're owned by FEMA they're owned by the government so they stay yeah. empty and they don't get used mm -hmm. that kills property values in those areas mm -hmm. so that, that that same neighborhood where uh, Ashley's grandparents at that's the flood control district they already came in they've already decided their two streets the first two streets those are gone those really? houses all gone they're gonna raise all those houses all gone Wow See yeah. that, and that's that makes a big impact on that neighborhood. Yeah. No one wants to go live in a neighborhood where there's two streets, two blocks of neighborhood. So you're saying they can't? They, they don't even build like parks or they anything. They do nothing on? with it because the money is allocated only to buy out the land. Yeah. So that the people can get their property value out. There's no money allocated for drainage or anything like that. Mm -hmm. That's part of the that, Army, the Army Corps of Engineers. Yeah, that doesn't help anything though. That's what the Army Corps of Engineers is saying is that if, if Houston can get that 20 billion, a big chunk of that goes to buying out a lot of those houses and then putting reservoirs where those houses are at currently. Yeah, because currently the way it's set up is it's the money is there to buy you out, but it's not it's there's no additional money to help the problem. <laughs> right? So so yeah, you can get you can have your house bought out if it's been flooded uh, over a certain amount of times and yeah. you qualify, but but just because they bought your house out and tore it down doesn't mean they're going to do anything with that empty lot. So yeah, there's no real fix. So Meyerland's definitely gonna have a bunch of empty lots. Well, Where else Meyer, are you guys? Meyerland is gonna be a, a, a crazy situation because those people, I'm sure by now, are completely tired of having their houses. I flood. can't even imagine, man. I, I know an investor who had a house there. We had a, we had the listing. His house flooded. He lifted it three feet. Yeah. It flooded again. Oh flooded again God. this round. And it flooded again this round. Mm -hmm. This is the third time, and it's been lifted three feet. Yeah. That's it. That's it for that house. Like how that much? House is done. How much more do you, are you willing to to put up with to, to live in yeah. a what's considered a nice part of town? Is it even a nice part of town anymore? That's the because question. it floods. It's like one of those houses. You gotta start putting plastic, <laughs> plastic floors, plastic walls. If somebody wants to get very very rich right now, they can just find a way to make houses that are completely impermeable. Yeah, I, I, we talked about this. I yes. was like, man, we need to figure out a way to fully waterproof a house. And if we fight, if we figure that out in Houston. That will take off faster yeah. than, than they can build more. Or just make like a stuff. floating house while, while you're at Ooh, it. <laughs> man, I think you might be onto something. Pier and beam with floaters. With floaties. Oh, yeah. man. It floats That's away as the water dries. You're like floating away through your, on your ark like Noah? Oh, my God. That'd be crazy. Well, if you live in Houston, you have to have floating houses, apparently. <laughs>
<laughs> Seriously, man. We, we need we need the core of engineers from Venice to come out to Houston <laughs> and give us some advice because right? it's just getting really ridiculous out here now. I hear you, man. It's it's insane what we're having to deal with. And and so right now we have realtors and I was part of the mastermind uh, group last week because all of, all of these, you know, top realtors are super concerned with what advice they're going to give their clients. How much value are they going to lose? What can they potentially sell for, you know, are yeah. are, are they going to take a hit? Are they going to have to short sale? All, these are all questions that are on everyone's mind and very little answers yeah, for them. We might have to spend we, a couple episodes talking about this. We have to take a quick commercial break. You're on the Realty Ruckus. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, everyone. This is David over at White Picket Realty, and I wanted to tell you about my friends over at Plans Express who can save you the headache of running your own permits. These guys are committed to offering a one-stop solution for all your plan and permit needs. They're proudly serving their friends and neighbors in the Houston surrounding areas, and they offer great service at an exceptional value with dedicated professionals ready to serve. Contact them today at 832-675-6217. Hey Houston, this is Alan Hernandez and I want to remind you guys to visit our friends over at Quest IRA to learn everything there is to learn about investing with your IRA. Now if you haven't been over there recently, you have to check them out. They have free educational classes, networking opportunities, the ability to tap into a billion dollars for your real estate investing deals. These are the guys to know when it comes to learning about this kind of stuff. You want to make sure you visit them and check them out over at www.questira.com. Again, that's questira.com. Stop searching and start staying in the know with our Houston Real Estate Events page on Facebook. Follow us by searching at Houston Real Estate Events to stay up to date on the latest events for real estate in the Houston area. If you are interested in having your event on our page, please email me at david at whitepicketrealty.com. Again, that's david at whitepicketrealty.com non-paid events only. One more time, find us on Facebook at Houston Real Estate Events and we'll see you all at the next one. What do you love about White Picket? I love that we work together as a team. I love being professional while having fun. I love the innovative approach we take every day. I love the support we get to grow our business. We, we love White Picket. And I love empowering the next generation of realtors to live life by their own design. If you're looking to grow, come grow with us. Email join at teamwpr.com. Again, that's J-O-I-N at teamwpr.com. And we are back on Realty Ruckus. Remember that you can find us live on Facebook and YouTube where if you chat with us during the show, we can answer your questions live on the air. Now, we don't want to dwell too much on the hurricane and all of the implications it had, but we have to be honest about what could happen to this city. Yeah. Now, New Orleans, already right now, there's still 90,000 people less yeah. in New Orleans than there was in Katrina. That was 11 years ago. Yeah. They still haven't recovered the population. Mm -hmm. Granted, their disaster was a little bit more intense than ours, but it also had to do because there was a lot of people that were lower income in New Orleans yeah. that couldn't come back and recover. Right Now, Houston, our income levels are a little bit higher, mm -hmm. and I hate to say this, but the areas that were hit were not the poorest areas of Houston. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there were areas that... 300,000 yep. to 200,000 and up. A lot of the more areas. affluent areas in Houston took a hit. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you got the West West Houston area, the, yeah. the, the Piney Point area, there mm -hmm. was area there was houses completely underwater that were worth We got six, million seven dollar million. houses so all over the place. That's going to affect River gentrification Oaks going forward. Oaks flooded, Bel Air flooded. How do you think think that's going to affect gentrification going forward? Oh, I here's the thing. I, I think that Houston if well, first of all, if you're in a house that didn't flood you are at a premium right now. Yeah. You think so? Oh yeah. Well, with all houses now, now it's you're in two categories: did not flood or flooded. Flood yeah. or didn't that's, flood. That's yeah, the first almost, thing on every listing. High and dry. Oh, did man, not flood. Yeah. I almost you're feel right. like they need to just add that to the listing. Yeah. yeah. Has this house flooded? Yes. And you just got to click yes or no, and it just comes up on any listing. The other argument to that is, well, you know, aren't most houses going to be considered flooded, considering that most, you know, so many of them did take in water, and are they going to be all on the same playing field? Hey, fine, you know, this house flooded, so did you know, one hundred twenty thousand other houses in the city. Yeah, but I think that the problem is you've got one hundred twenty thousand that flooded, but you have a million that didn't flood. Mm -hmm. So you got to you go for the other million that didn't flood. Question is what are you doing with your sellers when he when the seller calls you and says, "Well, my house didn't flood, I'm going to need to raise the price." You raise the and, price. And and <laughs> and so here's the thing. Well, there's a there's there's some intricacies with that. There is because believe it or not, price gouging does apply to housing. 
That's right. I posted this the other mm-hmm. day. It can apply towards rents. So if you if you have a house for rent and right now there's a ton of people that need rentals. Yeah. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to go raise my rental rate some mm-hmm. because it's demand. And here's my opinion on it. It's supply and demand. Yeah. You should be able to charge whatever somebody's willing to pay. Yeah. If somebody's willing to pay it, then that's what they're willing to pay. I don't believe in price gouging. To me, price gouging is is ridiculous. But it doesn't make sense. It, it it doesn't. It doesn't. But I can see where or why there was laws put in place to protect your general public. Because during the storm, I remember seeing someone selling uh, not bottles, but cases of water, which you normally buy for three to four dollars here in yeah. Houston. They were selling them for thirty to forty dollars at at the gas stations. Now I and, and what's get it. wrong with that? I, no, I get it. I get that, it. What's wrong with that? We, we look at it from the from the perspective of entrepreneurship. Yeah. Entrepreneurship says you can charge what you what you can charge based on what people are willing to pay. Yeah, and if you were unprepared and didn't go get your waters beforehand, and now you're stuck having to go get waters in a storm then you may have to pay whatever the cost is. I think the law is there to protect the people that didn't prepare because they just didn't know any better. They did. They <laughs> they, they yelled at you guys for being doom Because they, they, they thought they were going to Netflix and chill? <laughs> they thought they were going to Netflix and chill and then go out and buy some additional water. And the last thing you want to do is leave us, you know, a family die because they, they don't have water. And I get know? that. But but then you have, to, you have to count on the generosity of people to give away, which there was more than enough of that. In yeah, Houston, there was. There was plenty of generosity. To those that needed it. Yeah. But if somebody is willing, if they're that desperate, hey, I've got, I'll pay 50 bucks for it, the store should have every right to do it. And I think that owners and investors and anyone who owns a rental property should be able to charge whatever they feel is, is appropriate well, for their property. They should be, yes, if you're looking at it through through the through the capitalistic side. But on the other hand, it is illegal. So it don't is. go don't out do there. It. Don't, don't do go it. out there and do it and say, yeah. well, at Realty Ruckus, they told me I could charge whatever yeah, I, I wanted. Know, right? Here, because because we are not telling you that. We're letting you know that, it's well, illegal. there's a way to look at it. There's one way to look at it. But on the other hand, if you do it, you may look you may be looking at some law trouble. Yeah, you are. And it's a, it's a Texas it's, property code violation. Yeah, how actually, do they determine what price is price gouging so they're saying that if there's an increase it's it's up to the judge Uh obviously it's always up to the judge and the jury right depends if you go to judge or jury but they're saying a more than 10 percent is would be considered price gouging so Mm -hmm. if you're charging 1600 and you go more than 160 dollars more than your price gouging Mm -hmm. uh, you probably don't even want to raise it that much because do you really want to be in that gray area do you want to be the one guy having to go fight in downtown because you price well, gouged. And see, here's the and thing. There, a there are un- unscrupulous people everywhere. I've seen people on online talking about, I'm getting ready to go down there and buy as many houses as I can so I can charge, you know, two or three times the rent. You know, it, you can try it, but you may not get away with it. Here's the thing. For the sellers that want to raise their prices, you said, yeah. well, go ahead and raise it. Look, the houses are already going to be more marketable if they didn't flood. Yeah, they are. They are going to sell just a little faster because as soon as the market now, you know, recovers just a little bit and people can go out there and start looking for something, they're going to obviously buy the ones that didn't flood first. Yeah. At the same time, your appraisers out there aren't going to give you more value because your house didn't flood. Yeah, that's true. So at, that's true. at the end of the day, the house still has to appraise for what you're buying it and selling for. Yeah, how, I mean, I mean, we got to bring an appraiser in here, I guess, to be on the show, because how do you determine that appraisal value when there's so many homes now in the area that are damaged or just not in the same condition they were at the point, you know, before the flood? Same same as every every other time, you know? All, there's gonna be the flooded houses that are gonna more than likely sell for less. There's gonna be a deduction of value there. And there's gonna be the, the houses that didn't flood that are either gonna sell faster or they may get multiple offers and sell for a little bit more than market value and raise values that way. We, we right now don't have a real way to determine what those amounts are going to be. So there's yeah. people out there. And that's there, what everyone wants to there's know. There's people obviously. out there that want to know like a certain percentage. Yeah. It's going to be 10% or 15%. Some people are saying 30 to 50%. It could be in anywhere of those ranges for all we know I, because we don't exactly have any facts to prove. A lot of this has to deal with what happens with Hurricane Irma. Yeah. It yeah. really does. And I'll tell you why. If Hurricane Irma comes through with John on her back, because right now John's right, or not John, Jose. 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 Yeah. If Irma comes through with Jose, is this like the Hispanic name? Yeah. Hurricanes? And not Har- <laughs> I know Harvey Hernandez. So Harvey's Hispanic too. Harvey, it? Irma, Jose. Yeah, man. Uh, we're yeah. having a fiesta. Yeah, it's a fiesta. But this one's no fun. <laughs> if Irma comes through and does catastrophic damage, which right now is a Category 5, they're saying Irma could be the most powerful hurricane ever to hit the U.S. mainland. Man. If it rips through Florida 
and leaves Florida in the same position that Texas and Houston are in, you have two major disasters for FEMA now to pay. FEMA is broke. Uh, I got to make that clear to everybody. They don't have enough money for Houston alone. They don't even have enough money for Houston. They're already broke. FEMA will be bankrupt. Who underwrites all those flood policies? Government. The government, FEMA does. What happens when FEMA has no money to underwrite those policies? No one's going to want to insure. No one, no one's going to want to insure FEMA. Everyone's going to be like, wait, wait a minute. FEMA yeah. didn't have any money. Yep. Why, yeah. why, would it, why would I insure with FEMA? Well, That's when having a flood house, you could lose 50% of your value. If you can no longer get flood insurance and you know that it's a flood house, yeah, you could be losing 50% of your value yeah. there. If you, can't, if you can't get any flood coverage, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a possibility. Speaking of, I just spoke to Maria Segura over at Goosehead Insurance. Okay. Right now, you can go out there and get a flood policy for your home. The caveat being that you have to wait the 30 days yeah. unless you get the flood policy the same day of closing, closing mm-hmm. right? So uh, make sure that if you guys didn't get flood insurance, considering that we have these other storms yeah. sitting on the horizon. And it doesn't look like they're coming this way, but you never know if we're going to get more rain from them coming through the U.S. or what it may be. So yeah. go ahead and get it now because that 30-day waiting period is going to kill you. Preferred rates, check this out. Preferred rates, which preferred rates are given to houses that are in zone X, not in flood, not in None, flood zones. Year, which doesn't mean anything. Right, so it doesn't mean anything anymore. Everyone should have flood insurance. But we're looking, we're looking at yeah. coverage of a, of the building of two hundred fifty thousand dollars with a hundred thousand dollars in contents, only costing you approximately four hundred and seventy five dollars a year. Five hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah, and you you could have a potential payout of three fifty. Guys, this is something happening in Houston once yeah. per year now. So I, I've already sent Absolutely this information to to, yeah. to my wife, and I was like, hey. I know that we have houses in, in Zone X and they've never required flood insurance in the past. And they probably Put never them flooded. on now. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But you know what? Everyone always says, man, this house never flooded before yeah. <laughs> for the first time. I've owned it for the last 30 <laughs> years and it's never flooded. Just yeah. like some people say, hey, man, that last storm wasn't shit. What are you guys preparing <laughs> for? <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> so, all right. So. Where do we go from now? For now, I mean, what happens to the market? Where? Do, what do realtors do now? Are we still? Do we still have a real estate market here in Houston? I think more than ever, right now, realtors are incredibly important. Yes. yes. Why? Because one, the realtor's job, and, and this is you. This is where the difference between you being a good realtor and you being somebody who just goes and gets your license so that you can help your friend out. So you can collect the paycheck. It is a big difference because yeah. a good realtor, your job right now is to inform the public. Yes. It's to let the public know what their options are, what their resources are, what they can be doing, helping them sell their house if they need it, helping yeah. them find rentals if they need mm-hmm. rentals. Whatever people need, that's where the realtors can really step it up right mm-hmm. now. So real estate is gonna be incredibly important. And I don't care, Zillow, Trulia, all of that crap, none of those online digital services are gonna be able to help you out during a time like this. And right. during, you really have to learn to read the contracts, read the disclosures, understand your insurance. I've read so many horror stories online of people who their realtor and their insurance advisor didn't give them good advice and they got like a $50,000 deductible. Yeah. Well, they had 80 grand in damage, but their deductible is 50, so they're only gonna get 30. I'm like, or like Man, you mentioned, they have a flood insurance, but that doesn't cover natural disasters. Yeah, they have flood insurance that doesn't oh, cover yeah. natural disasters, or there's flood insurance that, it's it's flood insurance, but it doesn't cover a named storm. Mm-hmm. So a hurricane, it doesn't cover mm-hmm. a hurricane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what's what do you point? need it for? In Houston? Yeah, and in yeah. Houston, you definitely need to read that fine print because if you're buying, if you think you're good with flood insurance and you're only covering broken pipes, yeah. When Irma yeah, comes through, really that's not enough coverage. Yeah. No, no way. And, and better this, go breaking those pipes. <laughs> <laughs> this 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 is a time where all of those professionals need to really step it up yeah. to provide value and to provide information for their clients. Yes. That's the most important thing here. Yes, and I think that. That's a that's a very good um, just piece of advice for those out there who are thinking this is a time to capitalize. It, it's it's in terms of capitalizing yeah. when you first provide value. So you becoming a re- it's yeah. actually we're giving the same advice we always give, which yeah. is be a resource for your community. Absolutely. That's right. And right now you just have a you have a very targeted subject for which you can be a resource for that Absolutely. community. Absolutely. Look, if someone's been affected by the storm, they don't have time or even the the emotional stability yeah. to go out and find where they can apply for funds for help for. for for anything you know they're they're still trying to wrap their heads around what just happened yeah. mm-hmm. and we can be the people who are who are saying hey look here's who you can call here's a fund that can help you yeah. or hey you didn't get affected here's someone you could donate to 
Absolutely. You know, let's let, let if we are the people that are putting those resources or bringing those resources to to the people that have been affected down the road, if they decide to sell and when they decide to sell, then that may come back to you as a potential yeah. buyer or a seller. Well, and you bring up a really good point. People are very psychologically affected right now. Some people are very shaken. Um, and can't get their heads wrapped around it. It's also, you know, if you've already provided those resources and information for recovery, it's also a good time to just, you know, in, in a sense, reach out and hug your client, you know, yeah. go bring them, you know, a warm plate of food or something. You know, I love that you said that because I, I, I saw somebody sent over a, a, an email or something saying, hey, instead of telling people, let me know what I can help you with, Say something like, "Can I bring you some food? Yeah, can yes. I can I can I help you remove sheetrock? Or can just I, yes. show up. You know? If you know that somebody was affected, just show up. Yeah. yeah, do the unexpected. Yeah, that's how you that's how you change the game and you make yourself valuable. You do the things that are unexpected. Yeah, everyone expects you to try to sell their house. Yeah, if yeah. you're an investor, everyone expects you to, to try to go buy it. to try to buy the flooded make houses. a cash off. Yeah. Do the unexpected. Yeah, imagine if you're the investor who goes and walks them through the steps for applying for fee. Uh, helps them recover, helps them exhaust every option. And when there is no option left, then you then you have the opportunity the to house buy the is house. All yeah. yours, but you weren't a, a vulture. You did it the right way, yeah. and you can yeah. feel good about yourself. You can sleep yeah. at night knowing yeah. that you didn't steal somebody's house. And there may, and there may be some people you help, and they get the money they need. They yeah. get what they need, and guess and, what? And good you'll for feel you. satisfaction yeah. for yeah. being a good person. Yeah, good for yeah. you. Yeah. That is your right. payment. You did a good, you did yeah. a good deed. <laughs> and they're going to refer you to other people who maybe couldn't do the same thing. Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> so we're going to drop some comments down below on things that you guys can be doing. Make sure that you let all of your friends, family, neighbors know that if they need any help, we're here to help them. We want our audience to do the same thing. And when we come back, I want to finish the show off with something completely unflood related. This is a new law that's going to affect a lot of realtors and investors out there. Went into action on September 1st. And if you yep. break it, it's a class A misdemeanor. You can face jail time. So make sure you stick around after the break. You're going to want to know more about that. Hey, everyone. This is David over at White Picket Realty. And I wanted to tell you about my friends over at Plans Express who can save you the headache of running your own permits. These guys are committed to offering a one-stop solution for all your plan and permit needs. They're proudly serving their friends and neighbors in the Houston surrounding areas, and they offer great service and an exceptional value with dedicated professionals ready to serve. Contact them today at 832-675-6217. Hey Houston, this is Alan Hernandez and I want to remind you guys to visit our friends over at Quest IRA to learn everything there is to learn about investing with your IRA. Now if you haven't been over there recently, you have to check them out. They have free educational classes, networking opportunities, the ability to tap into a billion dollars for your real estate investing deals. These are the guys to know when it comes to learning about this kind of stuff. You want to make sure you visit them and check them out over at www.questira.com. Again, that's questira.com. Stop searching and start staying in the know with our Houston Real Estate Events page on Facebook. Follow us by searching at Houston Real Estate Events to stay up to date on the latest events for real estate in the Houston area. If you are interested in having your event on our page, please email me at david at whitepicketrealty.com. Again, that's david at whitepicketrealty.com non-paid events only. One more time, find us on Facebook at Houston Real Estate Events and we'll see y'all at the next one. What do you love about White Picket? I love that we work together as a team. I love being professional while having fun. I love the innovative approach we take every day. I love the support we get to grow our business. We, we love White Picket. And I love empowering the next generation of realtors to live life by their own design. If you're looking to grow, come grow with us. Email join at teamwpr.com. Again, that's J-O-I-N at teamwpr.com. And we are back on Realty Ruckus. Remember that you can find us live on Facebook and YouTube where if you chat with us live during the show, we can answer your questions on the air. Now, we've been talking about flood, 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 flood. Some of you are probably so tired of hearing about flood. <laughs> but now I'm going to tell you something that's going to keep you from actually getting in trouble with the law. Yes. So one of the rules that recently changed, 
And everyone said, it's no big deal. It's not, they, oh, oh, it's just disclosure. It's not a big deal. But there is some changes in the way that you advertise that no one was talking about. Yes. And now we've gotten clarification from TAR mm -hmm. on what those changes mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you are a wholesaler, if you're a realtor, and you're dealing with the wholesale contract, this still applies to you even yes. if you're licensed. If you are dealing with an assignment of contract, mm -hmm. one, you have to disclose it to the buyer that there's an assignment. But yeah. two, and this is the most important part, don't get yourself in trouble for this. It is a class A misdemeanor. It's a violation of Texas property code. You have to tell in your advertising that you are not selling the property. Yeah. That you are selling a contract rights to the property, and let me, Alan, Alan put it up. Can, can you read the the different one? Uh, oh, scroll. Let me let me scroll here. I'm going to actually read it to you. So, normally somebody would send out an email, maybe in the, in the title line and the subject line, they would put 973 Smith Street for sale, a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That's how wholesalers used to advertise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the way that Tar is saying that you need to advertise assignment contract for real property at 973 Smith. Assignment fee of ten thousand dollar rule, ten thousand dollars payable to XYZ wholesaler. Yes. That's what the subject line needs to look like now yes. in okay. order to be in compliance with Trex new or, or Texas new property code rules. All right, and let's just make sure that if you're an investor out there, and I know that we have plenty of our investment community that listens yes. to the show. If you're an investor out there, you're not licensed, and you for some reason decide you put a property in a contract and you need to sell it, and you're, and you're gonna do what every other investor wholesaler mm -hmm. does. You're gonna go on the forums and start marketing, and you're gonna say, I have this house, it's $100,000, blah, blah, blah. You can't blah. say I have this house for sale. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, not with the new regulations. Here's what can happen to you. Just so you know, don't say that no no one told you because this is this is going to start getting really Guys, serious for everyone who ever told me well trek only can only find people that are licensed trek is a licensing board for realtors yes you're right mm -hmm. but texas property code is what changed this is not a trek rule this is a texas property code change mm -hmm. that is civil you can actually go to jail for this. So it's uh, so your first offense is a class A misdemeanor. Yes. Okay, class A misdemeanor. Which is the highest type of misdemeanor. Multiple, it's right below felony. Multiple class A misdemeanors, meaning more than two, is gonna result in a felony conviction. Now Ooh. guys, you're looking at jail time now for playing this game and not knowing what you're doing. Yeah, So and, and I know a lot of, you know, especially in the forums, I'll see people I mean, they're even guilty of not having um, a, a, a contract. What they're guilty of is saying, hey, I have a buyer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That, I that, see that many times. And mm -hmm. this is the first sign that Texas is getting fed up with all of this wholesaling, the yep. way that it's going on, yeah. and people being defrauded. And this is the first step. Pretty soon it's going to be you can't even assign real no. property without a license. This is step one to making sure that if you are an investor and you decide to wholesale a house, you have to have registered with the state and they have to have fingerprinted you oh, yeah. and you have to have passed some sort of test some something and look here's the deal i i don't think it's i don't think it was something that really needed to happen but over the years i've seen some people get scammed and, and i've, I've, seen, seen, some and I've seen some stuff. really tr shady practices yeah. that that it's almost like this is going to clean things up it's almost yeah. necessary yeah. to to get rid of the bad apples out there and especially who are out there to just take advantage of and people. now especially in the situation we're in where even more of these vultures like we've been talking about are coming out I mean, you can see even and, more so. And, and, I, feel, everyone, and everyone I feel bad for like, and I feel bad for like even throwing out the word the word vultures because vultures doesn't mean you're a bad person because you're an investor. No, you can be an investor and be a great investor. Oh yeah. And yes. on this, and on the other hand, you can just be a vulture. Exactly. And that's a different. That's a totally different. Yeah, if you're a vulture, you're probably not a very good investor. Absolutely. To be honest. Yeah. Absolutely. That's so true. And we've run into these guys in our in our own practice as realtors well, as investors. And here's the thing, and just to get back to this one last time, and then we're going to jump into some events that we have coming up, and, and, and we'll finish out the show. But guys, each offense is a Class A misdemeanor. Yeah. Each one. So if you send out an email, that's an offense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You send out an email on another property, that's an offense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You send out an email on a third property, you're at three offenses. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so if someone turns you in and they start looking into all the activity you've been doing and they see each of those separate offenses, you're you're racking and up a felony pretty quick. I can tell quick. you one thing. Anytime a brand new law is enacted, and I wish Ashley Patton was here to, to corroborate this, but I can tell you by looking at case law, 
anytime they put a new law like this, they are looking for someone to make an example out of. Yeah, well, they want to see cases go through. They yeah. want to they they set the precedence. They want to see yeah. some precedents happen. And so you don't want to be the person that sets that up for yeah. everyone else. Yeah. Uh, so what we will see in the, in the next upcoming months is we're going to see some Trek complaints get filed from people that aren't obeying the law. We're going to see those people get pushed through the law. We're going to see the end result. And based on that, they're, we're, we're going to see how they're going to handle people who are making this these errors. Yeah, and I really do think this is going to result in some people winding up with a felony charge for doing this. It's going to be two or three people. They're going to make huge examples out of them. They're going to hit them with 60 counts of it for different houses that they're wholesaling. <laughs> and, and then that's going to become really, really widespread. Oh my God! So and so is in is in jail now. He's got a fel he's got a triple yeah. felony mm -hmm. against him or whatever mm -hmm. for doing this. Heck no! I'm out of the game. Yeah. So you want to stay? You want to keep your eyes tuned to? Let me ask you something. If you're licensed, can it, are you fine? If you're licensed, you have to at least disclose that you're a real estate license, that you're licensed, and that you're a broker, and you have to have the information about brokerage services. Got it. Now. If you're, if you're the principal in transaction and you're wholesaling it, you have to disclose just as any other anybody else that you are assigning a contract. Yeah. And it's not, you have to say that you're assigning it and what the assignment, the exact specific assignment fee is. That's yeah. a big change in the law. Yeah. No one's talked about that part of it. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, you just have to disclose. Yeah, you have to disclose what it is in and your what the advertising of it. Yeah. It's not yeah. at the point of contract. What your assignment fee actually is. At the time that you advertise it. Yeah. And on a double closing, if you're going to double close it, you still have to disclose, I have a contract on it and I will be double closing. Yeah. In the and then, advertisement. And then you better do it. <laughs> and then you better double close, not assign it. Otherwise, you're in violation. <laughs> yeah. So that that definitely changes the investment game. Big time. Moving forward. Make sure that you guys let your friends and family in the in the industry know because this this is something that could cause a lot of trouble for a lot oh, yeah. of people if they're not keeping an eye on this. I agree completely. Let's talk about the upcoming events that we have. What do we have coming up, David? Well, the, the calendar's looking pretty sparse, guys, because I had to take a lot of events off. Unfortunately, they've been, uh, many of the real estate events around town have been canceled, but uh, we do have for sure, the Jet Lending Renters Warehouse on the 20th coming up this month. Has that one been confirmed that it will still be it, happening? Well, it's not confirmed. So let Because Renner Country say, Club took in water. Oh, it did? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, let me just say tentatively right now, for what I have still on my calendar is the Jet Lending on the third Wednesday, which is the 20th, and then the Quest IRA Boot Camp, which is on the Saturday at the end of the month, mm. um, September 30th. Those are the two events right now I have on the calendar that are still tentative. Okay. Many of the other events, like um, the, the Chapman and Kirby event with Capital Concepts, that was canceled. The Maya Darn, Network event is canceled. So mm -hmm. a lot of events were canceled. Um, please feel free to reach out to me on the Houston Real Estate Events page and let me know if your event has been canceled or if you plan to go forward with it. And I'd be happy to put it out there for the real estate community to uh, attend. I know we are seeing a bunch of events popping up having to deal with the flood. Yes. So as soon as I get more information on those, I'm going to start updating the page and we should have those out soon. And then, of course, we're going to be traveling to Dallas this weekend yeah, as for a the team. the NAREP and the TAR Convention. So we have, we have NAREP National Convention in Dallas and at the same time TAR T A R is having their convention. Yep. So we're going to get a chance to go to both. We have a team of approximately 12 people coming just from this office, which is going to be awesome. I'm so excited to be able to go over there and and, and really learn and come yeah. back with some golden nuggets to implement. And then we'll be I mean, Alan and I will be in Atlanta getting trained on our new systems too uh, yeah. next week. So yeah, we, you won't there will be no realty ruckus next week. There so will just not. know that, guys. All right. So um Make sure you guys stay tuned. Make sure you hit the like button, the share button. Keep us posted on how we can help you grow your business. Thank you for joining us on The Realty Ruckus. Don't forget to keep up your ruckus, and yes. we'll see you next time. Stay Houston strong, baby. Houston strong. This has been The Realty Ruckus. Make sure and join us every Tuesday and Friday for new episodes. Find us on YouTube and Facebook for replays of previous episodes. And as always, keep elevating yourself and keep up your ruckus. Thanks for listening. Realty Ruckus.